I have a question, Dustin. Uh, how does it feel to transition from an actor and uh, comedians don't respect you to go on from actor to, to, to stand-up comedy? Because I'm sure they don't. Um, and how does it feel like doing a role so well as Screech? People are like, man, they don't want to... That's all I want to give you is Screech 2 and then like different uh, guess shows and videos and movies. How's that fit? The transition from being an actor to a comedian is really just tra trans... You're a performer first, okay? And it, it doesn't matter the CD part of industries or CD everywhere. Got news for you. The, uh, if you're an actor and then you, you go to do stand up, you just need material, but you should have stage presence, delivery, timing. And I'd say a good 90% of, of a good performer's ability comes from those three things. Uh, material's great, but you can hear it's like drummers. You can hear somebody play the same 4 4 backbeat, 100 drummers, but one of them is sweet. And the rest are okay. Some of them are terrible. You know they're offbeat and everything. I think uh, I think there's only so many premises out there, and I think for people to keep taking Brian Regan's a good example. He takes up premises that have been done a million times, and he described it I think as like a tunnel where everybody goes down this. He sees everybody coming out of this tunnel going, "There's nothing left. There's nothing left." And he goes in there and finds something and comes out with gold. I, I think it doesn't matter. Um, sure, there are people who have made the transition from television to stand up that have not <laughs> there it's a little shakier ground but uh i think that my comfort level i was a fan of comedy first i mean i, I used to grow up my parents put putting me to bed i wasn't supposed to sneak back out for all the eddie murphy ron delirious and sam kinnison and george carlin rob williams all the all the old comics doing their old stand-ups and uh i used to watch all those specials and then you know listen to them i listen to my dad's old carlin records and four CDs, and uh, it was great. And I, I just liked the art of comedy. I mean, even a street joke is, you have to have uh, an ability to tell it. You know, some people tell street jokes poorly. You know, they don't act it out, they don't get animated, they don't, their timing is, they're just talking through like they're reading something off paper. And that spoils it for me. There's an art to it all. And uh, for, for guys going from, from comedy to the film industry, it's a totally different beast as well. You'll see it all the time with like uh, ra radio DJs, radio guys who will be great on the radio, but then they'll try to be funny at a comedy club or some other event. It doesn't come off as well. You know, the, the transition is you just have to be able to adjust your wing flaps. You can still fly, you just have to adjust the speed at which you fly, the height, and, uh, and other things, but the plane should work if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And then the second part was, what have you had to do to overcome it? Well, the typecasting is why I've made some of the bad decisions in my life. I mean, like, trying to stir up controversy with hoax tapes and, you know, and things like that here and there, and trying to, you know, like, um, the Fit Club, Celebrity Fit Club is the biggest, because that's all, you know, that was all directed and scripted and categorized. You know, I was working with uh, Jim Ackerman out of, you know, head of New York VH1 offices on, okay, I'm going to, you know, going to be the bad guy and it's going to work and work this angle, this angle, and I was looking at other people's private videos, that they're, I'm not comfortable around my legs, so it's like I go after their legs, and it's like, it was, you know, I'm not mean, but I grew up with reality TV, to me is TV, that's just, I've been doing this since I was eight, and uh, I didn't think people would watch a weight loss show and just absorb it as the gospel truth, you know, it's like, you know, the reality part is all they saw. I, see, I just see TV, what makes good TV. You need a good antagonist for any good story arc, you know, and you need your hero and your villain. If you have that, you got it, it's watchable. If everyone just showed up and lost a pound and hugged, there'd be no controversy. No one would say, tune in next week to find out, especially on a show that was failing. It was down to, you know, it was their fifth season or whatever, and they weren't getting ratings. I jumped their ratings way back up. Had to out crazy Gary Busey, not easy. I had to do that, and then they brought me back for their next season, for the boot camp. So, for me, I thought, 
I'm doing this eight weeks, I'm going to get footage of me playing the bad guy so that I, you know, put me on Breaking Bad, put me on Dexter, like, you know, get me some serious roles. All the roles I'm getting, were, you know, I get movie roles all the time, but they're all Screech clones. It's all the same thing again and again and again. And there's only so much you can you can do. Jim Carrey wouldn't have been as funny as, as he became if he had just done, you know, Fire Marshal Bill every single movie, every single time you saw him. It'd be like, okay, okay, do you have anything else we got that was funny? A while, the first 20,000 times, now it's getting old, and that's the curse of, of what happens, even with cultural icons. You know, if, when you see them embedded in stone, so to speak, you know, you can look back at a rerun happens and like, oh, that's a classic. But if you, you know, if Jackie Gleason could come back and magically just be here and just start doing new stuff, he wouldn't do uh, Ralph Cramden again. He did it. It was, it's been captured in brilliance. It was, you know, he would do something different. And I think that that's, that's sort of the key to it all.